We're in the medieval city of Évora, Portugal. We'll start our time travel here. I'll take you back in time 8,000 years, starting our journey at this special sculpture of a tree, sculpted and erected by João Concha in the year 2020. So I'm taking you down a little cobbled road, pretty common here. Look at this beautiful tree, and that is the Cathedral of Évora right there. It's beautiful. We're now further back in time at the church of Nossa Senhora de Graça with its heroic Renaissance architecture and quickly moving back in time to the church of São Francisco with its combination of Gothic and Portuguese manualing architecture. So this is the Roman temple at Évora. And I'm gonna take you down this way where there's a overlook. So I'll give you a nice view of this old wall. These columns. Those are Corinthian columns up there. So that's a little bit later in history than the plain columns and capitals. I love that texture. So let's go look at this view. A little customary little snap shop right here. That's pretty cool. Taking you to see the view from the ancient walled area, you can see the outlying agricultural area that surrounds Evera. It's like an old castle here. And there's a big castle hall wall around this whole area. Fountain. I think these are to tell us that there are stones like this, old stones, somewhere nearby. It's a beautiful square in plaza in the middle of Evora to show you some of this architecture. Beautiful. Now we're heading out to see the ancient stones of the Almendras Kromlech. We're passing through serene farmland with olive trees, vineyards, and cattle. We're off the main highway, so there are more furrows and potholes in the road. The trip will be worth it, though. By the way, I'm leaving a link for my blog down below. I'll elaborate more on this and other adventures. One more turn and we'll ride up into the oak forest. You can hear the voices of the past here. We're walking through an oak tree forest to a site constructed in the Neolithic age. Ah, there are the stones. The men here is only a few people here today. There are rounded tops to these stones. They look like giant almonds. It's how the Cromlech got its name. There are no lintels capping these stones like in Stonehenge. Actually, Stonehenge wouldn't be constructed for another 2,000 years after this Cromlech. 
It took a sizable population to move these stones. The people here had to settle long enough to observe the celestial movements in relation to this place so that they could plan the alignments to the equinox, the winter and summer solstices. But there are no written records from this time. There are still many mysteries about this place. It sure feels sacred. Yes, I hear the voices from the past here. The area is approximately 230 feet by 130 feet, about the size of six basketball courts. The stones appear to range from three feet to eight feet in height. The arrangement of the stones are scattered into a rough ellipse, unlike the circular arrangement of Stonehenge. Before erosion and the shifts of land and stones through time, it's believed that this was a tidier concentric plan of an ellipse and adjacent smaller circle. Yes, these majestic, mysterious stones and surrounding quietness of nature feel sacred. When the Cromlech was constructed, much of the same ecosystem was here, just like this, oak trees and nearby water sources. Let's just walk now and take in the mystery and beauty of this place. Make sure you check out my blog where I'll go into more detail about this bit of time travel. Thanks for watching.